Sometimes Zoom is so funny in like switching screen. Ah, there we go. All right, everyone. Welcome back to the Have It All podcast. I am here not with the most interesting man, although maybe he is the most interesting, <laughs> man, but the most powerful man. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, T- Tim Matthews and I have actually known each other for quite some time. And uh, again, it's a surprise that this is the first time you've been on our podcast. So welcome, my man. Ah, uh, thank you, man. It's a uh, it's an honor. I know there's a long list of prestigious guests, <laughs> uh, prestigious hosts. Um, thank you. I'm I'm excited to see what unfolds over the next hour or so. You came yeah. on my podcast last time. We ended up talking for about an hour and a half or two hours. We had to literally be like, right, you know, okay, like, yeah, let's leave, let's leave. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, and and I'm sure something like that will happen here as well. Um, all right, before we jump in and get all crazy and dropping amazing knowledge bombs on these uh, people. Why don't you let them know who you are, what you're passionate about, and then we can go from there. Mm, so who I am, obviously, like Alan said, my name is Tim Matthews. I live in the UK, from the UK. Um, run a company called The Powerful Man, hence the most powerful man, always <laughs> makes me blush. Um, and what we do there is we support men. We help men, business owners, typically aged 30 to 45, to really step into their power, live up to their potential, and live a life they love, ultimately. And what am I passionate about? Truth, freedom, the guitar, uh, fitness, love. Um, I could go on. I could go on. Traveling, which we've done a a bunch of. You've been been pretty much nomadic for, for quite some time, yeah? Yeah, we were, for our the past three or four years, we've lived nomadic probably for about we lived nomadically for about two of those living a lot in italy as you guys uh, that's where i was when we were on the podcast rome florence milan uh san diego in california for, for quite a bit uh thailand germany berlin um spain yeah and the beauty of it is because we're in the uk whenever we go into europe we take the dogs so we've also got a dog one dog used to come with us. He's super well traveled. He's got his pet passport, got his little <laughs> things in there. He's got badges from Paris and Berlin, and he's a super well traveled dog. He's he's tasted some of the best dog bones in the world. <laughs> <laughs> the Italians go crazy for the dogs. Crazy. That's so funny. That's so funny. Awesome. Yeah. So Tim, um, very very similar. I mean, we connected a while back. Uh, Marcy was, was, I think Marcy was the person that connected us originally. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, we've, uh, I've been on his podcast. We've actually ran into each other a few times and, uh, Tim, I'm excited to have him on because we obviously are in a similar world, um, helping people activate and light up and actually pursue their life's passion and purpose. So it's always fun to have these uh, amazing conversations. You guys will get to be kind of a fly on the wall for one of these today. So um, with that being said, let's let's start with this. I know uh, 2017 was kind of like, a, from everyone that I've spoken to, a really almost turbulent year for a lot of people. A lot of stuff came up, uh, a lot of growth, obviously for people like us who, who witnessed it that way. I'm curious, uh, what was your 2017 like? Uh, what was maybe one or two of the biggest <laughs> lessons you took from there? Fucking hell. <laughs> um, so instant memory was writing out my review of 2017. The theme of 2017 was that I was hiding. Wow. Oh, so, yeah. And obviously, you know, I was still achieving a good level and living a good life and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, we all get these things, you know, we, we're human beings, wherever, wherever you are in your journey, you know, we all get them. And, um, yeah, the theme was hiding and I'm, you know, it gives me a little bit of solace knowing that everybody else kind of felt it too. <laughs> Cause I was yeah, like, man. fucking hell. So the biggest lessons for me was, um, I had quite a, profound experience in um october time yeah middle beginning middle of october uh with one of my friends we had a, did, uh, a bit of a spiritual journey and um i just saw this absolute massive thread of indecisiveness mm. that was just throughout my life you know i was kind of do we go away again do we stay in leeds do we set up roots where do we go my girlfriend, Amelia, you've met Amelia. She was just getting so frustrated with me because um, 
you know, women just see things far quicker than, well, my girlfriend anyway, sees things far quicker than I do. And, um, <clears throat> you know, she doesn't work. So I'm the one that provides mainly for, for us both. And she could feel the lack of conviction that I was showing up with. Wow. She could feel the lack of decisiveness that I had. And it was causing, it was really interesting to see how that shifted the dynamic between her and I. I buried my head in the sand and just been totally transparent. I just let her take over all the, all the finances, you know, the managing of them and uh, making decisions with it. And I look back now and I'm just like, it, like literally at the time I was, I was telling myself it was because it was just another thing that I wanted to get off my plate. Mm. Then as it evolved over a few months, it got to the point whereby, you know, I was having to ask her for, for money, which ultimately was, it was our money, you know, I'd, I'd earned it. It was my company and whatnot, but the whole dynamic of masculine and feminine had shifted and I'd let it shift. And then when it came to October time, that's when I saw the indecisiveness, saw how I was showing up. It became aware of the whole money thing and accepted a few things. And I was like, right, fuck this. I made some decisions right there. And then I'm like, Amelia, cause she was working for the powerful man then as well. I'm like, look, you know, it's come to an end. You're out of the, you know, and I want you to step out of the company, please. And she wasn't really doing a great deal at that point, but she was still involved with the money and the bits and pieces. And she just did not want to go out of it. It's like, wow. well, no, I don't want to step out. And da, da, da. And I'm like, the second thing I was like, Amelia, um, you want to stay in Leeds? Let's stay in Leeds. And we're going to rent this place over here. Well, no, I want to make sure we've got all these other ducks in a row first before we rent that place. And basically everything I was saying to her, she was mirroring back that, I don't trust you and I mm. don't feel like you've got this. She never said that, but that was the underlying thing. And I just, I chose to just stick my fork in the ground and be like, no, you're gone. We're living. Well, I didn't say we're living here. I just said, look, I'm going to live there. And if you don't want to live there, that's cool. Because, you know, when we've been in between traveling around, we go and stay at Amelia's, well, used to go and stay at Amelia's parents' place because she wasn't ever there. They, lived, they traveled to Italy a lot. Um, so she wanted to stay there and I was like, no, I'm, I'm going to live over here. You either come or you don't. Oh, well, you don't want me to move in with you. Well, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that I have got to, I've got to make these changes. And, um, you know, that was a real biggest lesson, um, for me, the indecisiveness and just how I let the dynamic in that relationship between the masculine and the feminine just it literally was flipped. Wow. It was amazing to, to, to become aware of it. So, so close the loop on it because people are like, well, did she move in with him? Ah. Still- <laughs> she finished me. She's found somebody else who's decisive and who's a powerful man and I cry every night. Um, she moved in. She, we got the place. Well, here's, here's the thing. So Amelia had been looking for places to, for us to move into in the area that I said I wanted to move. I didn't know that. And she never could find any places because it's one of the most expensive areas in Leeds, one of the most nicer, nicest areas. So anytime a place comes up, it goes fast. So anyway, once I'd made this decision, I Googled, you know, the air. Well, I didn't actually Google that area. I Googled an area nearby. And a place came up in that area that Amelia wanted that was absolutely ideal. Rung up the estate agent. I don't know what you guys call them in the US, but rung up the estate agent. And um, didn't get through to them. This was on Thursday. I finally got through on the Monday. Oh, well, yeah, sorry, but the place has been taken. What, what place do you want? Well, I want that one. No, but <laughs> it's been taken. So what place do you want? Well, just take the spec of that place, how light it is, the natural light, everything, how modern it is. That's what I want. Okay, you're not really listening to us, are you? Um, we'll try and find you a place. Anyway, two days later, bring me back up. It's fallen through. Do you want to go and see the place? Of course I do. Thank you, universe. <laughs> yeah. So that was the first door that opened up. Moved into that place. She moved in. Um, got her out of the business. Um, and never, ever since then, it's just snowballed. There's just been really great signs after great signs. The dynamic of the relationship has now shifted again. Uh, she's a lot more in her feminine because, you know, I'm a lot more in my masculine. Um, just, just everything has opened up in the business as well and other areas of life. And, um, it's great. It's amazing to be in flow again. 
Because yeah. I thought I was in it before, which mm, I'm in it now, but in a different way, in a bigger way, in a better way. And mm, it's just, you know, it just feels fucking good. Yeah. It's interesting. We were talking about this with a guy on a call uh, not too long ago about how whatever your belief system, even if they're really empowering to you at this moment, um, that they're still, it's still a container and they're still limiting. And so even though you had a successful business and things were going great and all that stuff, you thought you had certain things handled. It's just amazing how, when we keep moving forward, these opportunities for growth keep showing up. Mm -hmm. And I love that you highlighted, and I think this is really important for you guys to listen. It's like, you know, he could have heard what Amelia was saying as demeaning or um, getting frustrated or angry with her. And the fact that you were able to see that she was mirroring back to you certain things, um, I think is really a testament to, to where you are in your journey. Like yesterday, for example, um, I was putting the kids down and I had a call at 8 p.m. So by like 7.15, I'm like, all right, we got to go upstairs. We got to start the routine because I knew like I like to be on time for, for stuff. And I know that sometimes, you know, I, I don't love to rush their, their night routine. And so we're trying to get things moving, blah, blah, blah. And it's almost like they, they know that when you need to get somewhere, it's like <laughs> that's, that's when they don't want to do anything. And so I'm noticing and I'm just getting really, really frustrated. And at about like 750, I was like, guys, I give up. Like, I got to go set up for this call. Like, you know, I tried to help you and I, and I leave. And I am just like riled up and so on edge and just like so fucking pissed off. And here's the irony of all of it. The call that I had at eight is scheduled with this woman who I had a call with her like the week before about, she basically channels your children's soul <laughs> to you. So basically she speaks to your children's soul and their, their soul basically communicates to you. So I'm like so fucking pissed at my kids at this point. And I'm about to sit with this woman who's about to channel my children's soul to me. <laughs> so I, I get on and like one of the first things I say, I'm like, look, you know, I just had this experience and I'm kind of like still reeling with it, blah, 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 blah. So she was kind of laughing. And she said this thing that was really, really brilliant and kind of ties into this. Like my daughter actually came here to, to work with me specifically. Um, and wow. my son more with my wife, but like my daughter here for me specifically. And she said that she does things to you so that you notice the upset so that you notice the frustration. And what she, she said specifically on this call what she's doing is she's activating. There's a blockage in the back of your heart. And she's actually like, what happened tonight was her way to activate that, to show you that the frustration has nothing to do with them. It has to do with this blockage. And she keeps trying to point it out to you. And I was just mm -hmm. like, fuck me. Mm -hmm. And what's so beautiful is in the instant that that happened, right? Like everything that happened gained context. And as soon as it gained context, everything disappeared. And that's why I love what you said with Amelia. It's like, you know, the context was she's mirroring. Like this is an opportunity for me. It's not something like she's doing this to piss me off. So yeah. I mean, is there anything you want to say about that or add to that? Yeah. Do you know, in that same experience <clears throat> when I was, uh, realized I was being indecisive, I, um, I had this and it sounds so crazy saying these things, doesn't it? to the mind and um, just as you recall them, you just think, what the fuck? <laughs> um, but yeah, my experience was that um, it was something, it was like a feeling, it wasn't super clear, but it was this feeling or this message or something around um, my son, obviously I don't have any kids, <clears throat> but my future son, if you like, was there and he mm. was waiting to come into this existence where it was waiting for me to step up and be the man that he knows I'm capable of being before he then enters. So good. And I was just like, huh. it was just like super, super profound. And like you say, with, with what the woman said to you, you know, the frustration isn't, isn't really at the children. It's at the fact that you feel frustrated because you don't feel heard. 
you don't feel seen and um, then it's a case of your standards start to it puts you into conflict doesn't it well I've got this commitment over here and after here so you just start to feel torn don't you um, so it's yeah it's just it, it's just amazing what what we don't know from an intellectual perspective but what just feels what just feels so right and when you take that perspective of the whole thing of like I think about it from my parents I always think that I, I, I sometimes play with the idea that you know they're not really they're not really my, my, my family they're not really my parents because we're not really attached Mm. Although it might be from a physical body and from a perspective of blood and mum gave birth to me and all the rest of it, I chose them. I don't fully know for what reason I chose them, but I chose them. And when you start to take that pers- perspective, not that you know it's something that I consider a lot, it's kind of a fleeting idea that comes and goes, you really start to comprehend that there is no such thing as death. Mm. You know, and um, when you start to then playing that idea, the whole idea of you feeling rejected and feeling hurt and feeling victimized and all these things that pull you away from the type of deep connection I could then have with my parents and have with my father, you know, it, it starts to dissolve a lot of that for me because that's, that's ego in a lot of sense, isn't it? That's just the ego. And when you can see past that and just, being love and being um it's kind of like omnipresence as well isn't it it's just like it's just a total different paradigm have you read Um, a journey of souls no oh so good so concept real quick so i'll just for those that are listening um this doctor who was a therapist and he was doing um regression therapy basically but regression therapy and like, hey, he took you back to when you were six and so such and such happened with your mom or dad or whatever, right? And he would basically help people heal those core wounds and reinvent them so that they can live uh, a more healthy, balanced, you know, whatever life. But he, uh, he does this interaction with this woman and the woman ends up going back like 900 years into some other lifetime. Now, this is like a super science-y guy that has... Like in his world, that's not possible, mm. right? So he's very confused because she's speaking like a different language. She's wearing like rattle. She, he has no idea what happened. So he kind of like forgets about it, brings her back in, does it again. She goes into a different lifetime. So now he's like, okay, I got to look into this. And so he starts doing this stuff and realized that he can take people into past life regressions instead of, and heal kind of like ancestral stuff. Hmm. but where he goes where no one else has gone before um he decides that he's going to start taking people to the moment of their death so they're on their deathbed he brings them there and then from there when they die he has their soul take them on a journey so he basically follows the soul from the time it leaves the body to the time wherever it goes, to whatever it goes to learn, blah, 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 and until it chooses a new body to come back. And he takes you through that whole process. And it is breathtaking. It's like one of those things that I think for most people could be just so out of the realm of what they believe is possible. And I think you, you're like us in the, in the sense where, you know, you just feel truth. It's not like someone, you don't need to get agreement from outside. Like if you hear something, it, there's a resonance in your body. You're like, yep, that's true. Right? Like you just feel it. Like your soul is like, yeah, mm-hmm. ding, 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 ding. That's, and mm-hmm. so that was my entire experience. It was just like, it was like experiencing home. I, I, I don't know how else to explain mm-hmm. it. And anyway, like one of the things in there is, you know, how we choose our parents, how we choose our bodies, how we choose to come into this lifetime, why we choose the certain relationships that we do, et cetera, et cetera. And for anyone that's ever experienced death or, or is grieving or anything like that, it's a book I highly recommend because it just gives you, again, like a different context mm. that you can start to see the love and beauty in the, in the event. Mm. And uh, yeah, one of the big things is like we never truly die. You know, like we just go from one experience to another experience to another experience to another experience. 
And uh, at least for me, it gave me a lot of peace around, around the physical world. Wow, that's just like, oh, give me goosebumps. Um, and you're totally right, because all these ideas of like um, what I spoke about with my parents and the whole thing of, you know, your future son and um, <clears throat> a lot of these things, you know, I've not read them in a book and I've been like, oh, it's just things that come to you, whether it's in meditation or whether it's in moments of silence, in nature, whatever. It's just ideas, inspiration, whatever you want to call it. But it just feels like you said, it just feels like home. And um, one example of this that really, because um, my mind wants to figure things out, you know, it wants to be like, but how? <laughs> but yeah. then I just get back to the feeling. But one example of this, which really kind of cemented this as, well, how do you argue with it? I ran an event a few years ago in Austria, in Austrian Alps, but a group of guys there, I flew out a woman from the US to be one of the speakers. And um, she's like a spiritual healer, clairvoyant, I don't know her actual title, but she's been in that field. And she took us all through a journey on the second evening. And it, it was like a guided meditation. It was like a guided meditation to, I don't know if it was around forgiveness. I can't remember what it was, but the point of the story is I was in the room. My sister was in the room. My sister was in the room because she was there. And my dad was in the room because he went to the event too. because He's an amazing chef, so he cooked. And anyway, what, what my sister and I saw, we both saw the same thing. Wow. The thing that we saw was my dad up against the wall with his hands like that being whipped by our grandfather or hit or something. And just this immense feeling of not being understood while being misunderstood. And this immense feeling of sadness and loneliness and numbness that my dad was feeling. Mm. And... Um, Obviously, we only, that only came out because we went around and asked everybody what they saw. When I said it, Caroline was like, fuck, that's what I saw. Um, and then a couple of weeks later, we were back in Leeds. <coughs> and we were having dinner with my parents. I brought the experience up. And um, I don't think my dad was in the, in the actual room when we, before when we went around what everybody heard. So this time it was there, so I brought it, I brought it up. And... Um, Immediately he went on the defense. He was like, oh, no, 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 that, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. As though it was a, a thing that I was recalling with him. And he was like, no, 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 no that, that, that wasn't me. That was your uncle. And uh, my mum my was sat on the side of him. My mum was just shaking her head and going like that, as oh. if to say, no, it was your dad. And I was just like, I was just blown away by like how the hell, you know, and um, yeah. It, it, just a f amazing words don't even come close to i mean i have i have goosebumps you yeah. know it's it's so interesting because like something like that to the human mind if you saw it and it was just you seeing it you probably wouldn't have even thought that much of it you would have been like wow that was really trippy but the second your sister was like holy shit i saw the same thing you're like there's something to this right like mm -hmm. it's it, it, one of those things where you almost can't argue with it at that point because you're like what are the chances that two of us see exactly the same thing at exactly the same time? Like there's gotta be something to this. Whereas if you just saw it, you'd be like, wow, that was pretty, pretty wild. Like I didn't expect <laughs> to see that, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's, it's the whole thing, isn't it though? Because it, I believe that, you know, governments and certain people want to keep us away from this kind of playing in this kind of space, because when you start to play in this kind of space, and really become detached from your physical body and your mental body, you really start to become aware of flow and love and freedom and expression. And you're fully expressing yourself. And if all of us were fully expressing the, the gift and the power that we are and the truths that we all naturally, the wisdom that we naturally had inside of us, there wouldn't, there wouldn't be the mass control. There wouldn't be the fear. There wouldn't be the war. There, or there'd be a lot less of it anyway. You know, and there'd be this uprising of love, truth, power, purpose. And, you know, money would be much less of a, a control for people. Yeah. And in terms of having it all, you know, that's where you really start to play in that energy of, of having it all. Because, you know, whenever we work with a lot of men that come to us and they, for, for a lot of people's definitions, they have it all. You know, they've got six, seven figure businesses and, 
Uh, they've got the kids and the car and the house and the this and the that, but they've hustled their asses off and they've sacrificed everything in the process and primarily themselves. They've sold out on a lot of their own beliefs, a lot of relationships, a lot of friendships. They've turned to alcohol, women, TV, food, drugs. They've basically exhausted all of the external sources of validation and connection and comfort. And he's brought them back full circle to like, well, fuck, the only thing left is me. Mm. The more money they've earned, the more external successes they've had, the bigger the void has become and the emptier they have felt. Yep. And the journey that we take them on is to really help bridge that gap to this energy in this place where we're talking about. Because this is where you really get out of your head, into your heart, and you start to live with flow, with ease, detached. It's crazy because the, you, you, the less you rush, the faster it happens. Yes. And um, getting your head around that concept without having to fight for things and struggle for things and just, just speaking your truth and asking for what you want. Yeah. It's really masculine. I mean, one of the things that even in the last 18 months for us has happened, you know, masculine can produce amazing results. It does. I mean, just look all around the world. Um, the feminine energy is what you're kind of talking about, which is really like mm. allowing and creating and receiving and being soft with yourself and looking inward and all that kind of stuff. Whereas I, you know, we coach similar people and the, the pattern that I see and when you talk to them, they were getting messages all along mm. that this path is not their right path for a long time. Most of them, since they're like 30, they already feel inside like this is going to kill me. But then the mind comes in and the ego gets really loud and is like, fuck that. Like, go get me that Ferrari and go buy that, you know, million dollar house and go build and sell this business for $10 million because that's how they believe they're going to get love and acceptance and fill that void that you're talking about. And then they check off all those boxes. And it usually happens because, again, you can produce those results. They'll check all those boxes, you know, like 40, 45, 50 years old. Mm. And it's when they sent, when they hit that last check on that list and they feel emptier than they ever have, mm. that it gets fucking scary. Because mm. yeah. now it's like, I have done everything I set my mind to do and I feel worse than I ever have. And that's when you say like they come back full circle because that's a really big wake up moment for people. And at that point is when like, I feel like people like us, they, they send that message into the world. Like I fucking need help because mm -hmm. I'm going to self-destruct. If this keeps going, I don't know what else to do. And then obviously, you know, we start working with them and I'm sure you do too. And you just like, look at their life and it's overweight, uh, relationship with their wives are mostly garbage. They haven't seen their kids in the last 10 years or been to any of their events. Uh, that didn't allow themselves to enjoy or travel, maybe like one vacation a year just to like feel like they checked out for, for a week mm -hmm. from life. And then you're like, well, there's this whole other way. And they're going, uh, I don't know how to do that because they've been so programmed. Like this is how you produce results. And the stuff that we're talking about, like go slow, produce more to their world is like, how, how is that possible? How is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the whole thing of, <clears throat> for men especially, I, I've not really worked with many, well, any women, if I'm honest, so I can't really s speak uh, t to, those, to those people. I imagine there's a lot of parallels, but for the men in particular, <clears throat> embracing easy is like <sighs> weakness. Yes. You know, um, it's weakness. It's there's so much pride in the struggle because as society, we've been taught to worship that, haven't we? We've been taught to worship the hero's journey. Absolutely. Which is rise from the ashes and overcome insane obstacles and, you know, you'll sacrifice everything and then you'll be triumphant. You'll stand on the top of the mountain with a trail of destruction behind you, battered, bruised, but you've made it. But you've made it. <laughs> 
And it's like, it'd be cool to tell a different story. Yeah. I just wonder what it'd be like if, you know, because a lot of this comes from like Disney and kids cartoons and whatever. I just wonder what it be like, what it would be like if there was just a different story told. Um, just a different story told around, um, I don't know how it would come about, but like following, following what feels right and, you know, really going out there and asking for it and how things open up to you and how you're able to look at the signs and follow the signs and just be one step at a time and the next step instead of focusing on step two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and surrendering and having fun. Fucking hell. Having fun yeah, having along fun. the way. Skipping down, skipping along each step, maybe. Um, I don't know. It'd be a really cool story for kids to be Have you, have you read or heard of a book called The Celestine Prophecy? Yes. Have you read it? Yes, amazing. So that, that way, as you were telling me, like that's what kind of came to mind. Because there really was that guy, right? That like finds this thing and goes on this epic journey. Yeah, yeah, the manuscript. Really follows flow and throws everything he's ever known out the window. I remember distinctly reading that book while on a plane. I took it as like a vacation book and I, I traveled to Belize. And we actually in Belize went to one of those like ruins. And I remember, because I was reading this, in, it was like the first, like, I don't know, like spiritual book, but one of those like stories where I remember just like, it made me feel different. And then we go to these ruins and I'm standing there and I'm just, I could just sense the energy of this place and how sacred this place was basically because I was in this kind of journey with this person in this book. And um, yeah, man, I couldn't agree more. I, I think there's, there's a new story that gets to be told. Um, I think there's, the two words that have come to me recently in meditations have been uh, the Renaissance, like, you know, I want to say Renaissance men, but we obviously work with women. So like the Renaissance human um, and the sovereign human mm -hmm. and sovereignty is a word that I think gets thrown around a lot. Like I, I never quite knew the definition of sovereignty. Like I, you know, in my world, it was like, kings are sovereign and like gods are sovereign. but I, I didn't ever look at the definition um and it is such a beautiful definition so I, i'll just pull it up real quick and i'll uh, i'll read it to you guys so sovereignty is there's a few definitions supreme power or authority uh the authority of a state to govern itself and then my favorite one is a self-governing state and I know that that could be read as like, you know, a state, you know, like U.S. or some other state. Mm. I, I, the way I listen to it is deeper. It's like a being, like a self-governing inner state, mm. right? Where your state of being is self-governing, where you don't need all the stuff that we were talking about, where you don't need the external validation, you don't need the house, the car, the trophy wife, the, you know, the business that sells for 10 million bucks. Like those are things that come out of the state of being that you are, not because it's something to achieve and do. The only thing that brings you joy and love, you find internally. And if we, when we live in that world as a species, this planet, this universe will be so different. And like, I think that's, you know, what you and I, I'm sure you resonate with that. And like, I think it's something mm -hmm. that we innately know to be true and, and possible, not even just like as a theory possible for humanity. And uh, that's why I love talking to people like you. Cause I know we're part of the same human species revolution mm -hmm. and it just, it's a blast to be on the journey with you, man. Mm, I'm just humming. Mm. <laughs> just tearing myself. Go. Mm. Um, yeah, man. I just yeah. It's just so so key. It's the whole thing of you know a lot of people when we start working with them, it's it's uh, do have be. Yes. You go to do something to have something and then be something. It never works. It's always be do have, in my opinion. Um, and I get, I'm thinking of a, a conversation with a guy, uh, a couple of days ago, like, what do you want? I'm like freedom. You know, he said freedom. I'm like, okay, cool. What type of freedom? And he's like, Hmm, 
um, you know, just, just, just freedom. I'm like, well, okay. In, in our world, there's, in my world, there's, there's five freedoms, obviously freedom of money, freedom of time, freedom of location, but then freedom of purpose mm. and freedom of happiness. Mm. And to go into those, those last two a little bit, freedom of purpose, obviously is to do your purpose work, like be able to just surrender to the gift that isn't just aching to be realized inside of you and just let it flow through you. And then the actual freedom to feel proud of what you're accomplishing, proud of who you're being, to be able to relax and take a moment and fill your cup and have a gratitude and appreciation and joy and excitement and, you know, all those things. Because <clears throat> as, as, again, I'll speak to men, when, as men, we have been taught to suppress so fucking much because we've not known how to express in a healthy way. Yep. Don't don't be a girl and cry. You know, don't be a girl. Don't upset. You. Don't scare women by being angry. Um, don't be this. Don't be that. Don't be the other. So what we've done is we've pushed down and held back and, and held onto and stored all this anger, guilt, shame, all these stories of judgment of how we're wrong and we can't do this and we can't do that. But then all that leaves us in is is no man's land. <laughs> not knowing who we are or what we want, and that is totally okay to not know who you are or what you want because when you accept that the ball's back in your court and you can yep. change it as long as you want to keep it at arm's length you know it stays at arm's length but yeah it leaves us in no man's land and then to be able to have the freedom of happiness we get to dive into that anger that guilt that sadness that shame and release them feel them in a in a healthy way rather than label those emotions as weakness or bad or wrong or heavy because it's not possible in my experience it's not possible for you to be open to feeling joy happiness excitement gratitude appreciation all the lighter emotions if you're not expressing and feeling the heavy ones too because you're going to feel them because you're a human being there's no such thing as perfection i'm sure I don't just skip down the road every morning, every day, you know, just absolutely enjoy. And, you know, I'm a human being, you know, when I realized I was being indecisive, you know, although it was great to be clear, it was like, fucking hell. Yeah. You know, there was a little bit of frustration there too. Yeah. Um, but I give myself permission to feel that as well, rather than just, just keep it away. Because I know that, you know, the more I feel the heaviness, the more I welcome the lightness. Mm. And it's, it's interesting because some people might think that, and I, well, I used to think that the more I feel the heaviness, the more I'm going to feel the heaviness. But mm. you don't. The more you give yourself permission to feel the heaviness, the more you open yourself up to the lightness. Brilliant. Brilliant. You know, like as you were talking, what came through is we get to redefine man. And I think for a long time, all the things that you were talking about, this, this, as, as a dad, I can speak to that, right? Um, I have a boy and a girl. And I'm really happy I have both because it really is a vast contract, contrast because I grew up, it was me and my brother, uh, my dad and my mom. And my dad was very uh, authoritar authoritarian growing up. So it was like, you know, uh, militant in a way where it's like, you just do what I say, right? He had like a very, very tough dad personality. You didn't want to fuck with him. Like when he spoke, you just did what he, you know, what he asked. Um, so I kind of grew up around that. And I remember there's a few distinct moments. Cause like as a child, right, you're sourcing the definitions of what things are through your experience. And each one of us has our different experience, right? So like my definition of a man, and for most people that have a dad that's actually around, I, I get that for other people that have different experiences, but like definition of a man is my dad, right? Like my dad was Superman to me. So it's like, that's the definition of man. And uh, definition of relationship, like I got to watch my parents and my parents are madly in love and they've been married now for 37 years. So I had an amazing example of what a relationship is and can be. And I realized very early on that I was living in a gift because I would go to other kids' homes and realize like their definition of a relationship was fucking horrible. Like I, I just, it was shocking when I first kind of moved to this country and like saw how horribly people treated each other or they didn't mm. talk to each other. It was just, like wild to me. 
So with all that being said, I, I distinctly remember certain moments where it wasn't necessarily that my dad said to me, hey, man up or be tougher than that. And I'm sure he did. What I remember is the moments where I saw my dad be a certain way and I asserted, oh, that's what it means to be a man. Mm. I remember this moment distinctly where like uh, my grandparents, his, his parents uh, came to visit us and I remember them leaving and I was in ta- like crying so hard because every time they would come for a month and they would leave and it would just like felt like my heart was ripping out of my chest kind of like the first time I left Israel and my, I look up at my dad and he's not crying. Like his parents are leaving and he's not crying. And I just, this was during my bar mitzvah. So I just turned 13 and I remember looking up at him and going, Oh, cause like, you know, as in Judaism, when you have your bar mitzvah, like that's your initiation into manhood. I don't know where the mm-hmm. fuck they came with that. Who the fuck knows at 13 that you're a man. Right. But <laughs> I remember looking up at him and going, Oh, so now that I'm a man, like I don't, I don't need to cry like this anymore. And I remember running into my room and like giving myself a pep talk. Cause I was still crying at this time and like giving myself a pep talk. Like you can't cry anymore. You can't cry anymore. And so wow. it's, it goes so much deeper than just the, the movies and that it's like that child experience is what shows it. And I can tell you as a parent, like my parents never read at home. Now they read, but they didn't when I was growing up. And so reading wasn't a really big thing for me. I read every single day and my kids watch me meditate and read and exercise every single day. Guess what they already do? Read, meditate and exercise. They're five and six and a half. I didn't have to say, hey, you should do this. Because they're right, like they're creating their definition of what it means to be X, Y, Z, whatever that is in their mm-hmm. world, through our relationship, through what they see in us. And that's why, you know, do like people will mimic you. They will never do what you tell them to do. Mm. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, the, the, the saying that came to mind was, you know, kids do, don't do what you say, they do what you do. Um, and <clears throat> yeah, just just fascinating, absolutely fascinating. As you're going through that story, there's <clears throat> there's um, I'm listening to Lewis Howe's book recently, The Mask of Masculinity. Okay, and, um, fascinating the impact that, that he talks about sport a lot, and the impact that sport has had on defining what it means to be a man. Um, you know, because sport is such a huge thing, isn't it? And you know, I don't know about you, but for me and my local kind of area in Leeds when I was growing up, <clears throat> football was huge. Soccer in the US, football was huge. Obviously, the English Premier League, all that kind of stuff. Yep. Massive. And um, so when you then go into those sporting environments and you're surrounded by your coach and teammates and all the rest of it, it really starts to mold that whole definition too. Yeah. Um, and it's really fascinating to – it's really fascinating to consider, you know – if there was to just start to introduce an element of the, of the softer side of things, you know, why does it have to always be about going to war? Why does it, yeah, cool. I, I get the whole fact that you want to get people fired up. So they're in the, in the masculine energy more, so they're more productive and all the rest of it. But here's, here's the caveat to this. The best players in the world, let's just say soccer, Ronaldo, Messi, they are the best players because they are the most relaxed players. Exactly. They're the best players because they're able to be in the zone, in flow. And that doesn't come from going to war every game. That comes from the balance, Rust. doesn't it? Yeah. And, and, and yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, it's, you know, it's really fascinating to consider the role that sport plays in defining what it, be, it means to be a man, but also then redefining what sports saying, because if you actually look at the top people, it's very different to what I was getting told at, at the lower leagues when I, was, when I was growing up. So true. And as you're talking, like other names that came to mind was like Michael Jordan. Uh, I love tennis. You know, Roger Federer. These are, when, when people talk about like people who are in the zone, right? Like they'll say he's unconscious or he's, out of, he's playing out of his mind. He is. Yeah. 
And the, that mind aspect is really like that very masculine, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to do, and I'm going to, you know, whatever. They stem from a place where it's like when you hear them talk about their, their greatest achievements, they don't even feel like they were there doing it. It was so <laughs> out of body. And that out of body experience is when you let go of that masculinity. And when you just tap into this like divine energy and start flowing these, I don't know, cosmic waves, if you will, of just like, <laughs> they're always at the right place. Wayne Gretzky, right? Like I went where the puck was going, not where the puck is. Like to explain that to someone, it's like mind reading. But how do you know where the puck is going? You know, because you're in that mm. energy. Mm. You know, because you've released all that other stuff and there's just so much trust and knowing that you will always show up this way and then the rest can just go away. It really is very interesting. And I, and I think you're right. I think, uh, cause as you were talking, I'm going through my, like, I also played soccer. Um, I played competitive volleyball too. Um, and it really is like soccer is one of those sports football, probably even more so lacrosse now where it really is about being tough. And I actually, I was a really small kid. And uh, I remember I was like, when I was younger, that was not an issue because I was super fast and I had good skills, whatever. But like, as I got older, I got to high school, I was still five foot tall, probably like a hundred pounds, right? At that point, some dudes are like six feet tall and 180 pounds. Like there's only so much you can do. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah, I remember many, many times being like, wow, I'm, I'm too small and I'm not tough enough and I'm all this stuff. Yeah. And it's just like program, 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 which I'm still releasing to this day. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's almost like <clears throat> you get to turn down the mind so you can hear the heart raw, yeah. isn't it? You know, you turn it down, turn it down. And the more you turn it down and just get out of it and detach from it, it is. I love what you said about cosmic waves and playing out of your body and playing out of your skin and playing out of your mind. You really do. There's, I'm sure you've had it. There's been moments when we've been coaching the guys and the coaching calls and they'll say, I'll just rip, they'll, they'll say something. I'll just riff on something for, I don't know how long it is. And I'll say, Oh yes. Yeah, so, so what did you say at that point? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. No idea. Like, <laughs> I don't have a clue what I just said. You're going to have to come back, watch your recording. Cause I don't know. What I just said, and um, we held an event in the UK a couple of weeks ago. And oh my God. Uh, well, obviously, you plan out the event, don't you? You write things down and you've got a schedule, day one, day two, uh, day two, the times went totally out the window. Yeah. Um, and I just never knew that we could produce something so powerful. And it, I'm not even going to take responsibility for it because I don't even feel like it was... It was me. It was my thing. Um, I'm going to let you in, into something that I've not really, I've not shared it publicly. I don't know if it's a big deal or not. Um, I guess that's in the eye of the beholder, isn't it? <laughs> Story. Um, acceptance. Um, but yeah, every time I, when I journal, I don't know when this started, but when I journal, I, I, like I write down like, I'm, like it's not me. It's always using language like you and we and hours and it's like mm. it's like this say i'm writing about the business or something i'll be a bit our business and uh oh thank you for your help and um you know when you did this and you know it's like and whenever i'm really in huge flowing with the work that we're doing it really just doesn't feel like my thing it doesn't feel like my company it doesn't feel like it doesn't I, I hate the word client clients. It just doesn't feel like mine. It feels like ours and yeah. we, and I just don't feel like I can take any responsibility for the content, for the coaching, for the ideas. Cause it just, it just doesn't feel like it's mine. Yeah. It really doesn't. Did, did, did. I've, I've the same exact experience. And uh, our last event <clears throat> I spent, weeks i mean weeks putting like a slideshow <laughs> together and you know a beautiful slideshow and like a whole script <laughs> of stuff and so we we kind of mostly stuck to it on day one uh kind of mostly day two just started and it like people came to play and we threw the entire fucking script out the window i mean like day two 
and, and what got created in that space because we allowed the energy of the room to create it versus us trying to drive it. Mm. Um, and he, again, like you said, it was one of the most beautiful and powerful. I've only had that experience twice in, in other rooms with people ever before. Uh, we got to this point where it was like four straight hours of people running to the stage, grabbing the microphone and just sharing like the most insane, amazing stories and just releasing stuff like stories that I, you know, you don't even see the shit in movies. It was like that. And we're, you know, everyone in the room is just crying and bawling and these people yeah. just, they weren't sharing it from this place of pain. It was like sharing it from this place of release, like a vortex got created and it was like, we're just going to take all this shit away from you guys. Um, <laughs> and it was so beautiful. And I'm clear that none of that would have happened if we were attached to the mind going, no, 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 but this is what we need to deliver. And this is what the process, it was like, fuck all of that. This is what's here now. And, and mm. I, I, I want to ask you this, because this was my experience afterwards. It takes a tremendous amount of trust in yourself and your connection to source in order to throw all that shit out the window and know that whatever is supposed to come through will come through and you will know exactly wh what, what to do and what to say and, and how to kind of like rein in this energy. Um, and that was something for me that I walked away and I was like, wow, I really get to look at my level of trust in me to deliver something to that level where I, cause like the next time I want to walk into a room and literally have nothing, no notes, no slides, nothing. And just kind of see what shows up. Um, and as soon as I said that, even after that amazing experience, I was like, I can't do that. You know, like the mic comes in like, I can't do that. Meanwhile, I just fucking did it. And I like, I was like, I can't do that. Um, so I'm just curious, like, what's your experience? Cause I know trust and, and acceptance, like you just mentioned is something that I'm sure you work on all the time and mm. work with people on. Mm. Do you know, there's two words that come to mind. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that's what I think. I just think, fuck it. It feels right. Fuck it. Yeah, it feels you know? right. I, that's it. And I just go with it. And, you know, is it always right? Um, do you know what? So far, it, it has been pretty close. Um, and whenever I try and then I get out, it, the thing with it is, it's super simple. When you're in, when I, when I say super simple, I don't, I don't say that from a perspective of demeaning it or um, demeaning anybody or whatever. It's super simple in the sense that there's really no detail to it. Mm. Um, it's just like a, like you talk about the plan. I talk about the plan. There's a lot of detail, a lot of hours that go into the plan and you're trying to come up with things and you're thinking and you're doing this, you're doing that. But then when you just feel something, there's really no details about anything other than the next step. And it's really just that kit, that thing of fuck it and reducing the lag time, feel, act, feel, act, feel, act. Rather than, and we all have that, we all feel, but a lot of people go feel, think. Yes, think. so good. Think, think. act, kind of. And then, you know, or it might be feel, think, act, 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 and they never get back to feeling. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's really a case of, of, of fuck it for me. And, um, yeah, it's funny because after that event, our event as well, just phenomenal, phenomenal experiences, like pff, profound, profound, so emotional, so, oh. And uh, afterwards, you're we like, well, that will be great to, you know, next time we do that, and do straight into the mind. Oh, yeah, well, we're going to do that again, and next time we'll do this, and we'll change it. And it's like, you know, that experience was created from the direct opposite energy that you're now going into to analyze it and pull it apart and try and reproduce it. Yep. Um, there were a lot of variables that went into making that event amazing. The men in the room, the, how they came to play, um, just all sorts of different things. So the fact that, you know, if I was to try and think that we were the, just the ones that created that and, you know, bullshit. It's, bullshit. We just weren't. Um, 
So, you know, we'll go into the next one with the expectation that we're going to do. Yeah. And you have to let go of that too, yeah, right? Yeah. It's like yeah. this gets to be its own experience and its own present <laughs> moment phenomena, right? Mm -hmm. It really is. And the mind's like, well, what if we don't do it as good as we did it last time? And, and what yeah. if they don't have that same experience? And what if we can't create that vortex again? And blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude. We don't even have one planned. Like, what are you even, <laughs> even thinking about right now? Uh, um, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Because, uh, and I, I want to be, there, there are, you know, this isn't the only way, is it? You know, this isn't the only way to achieve the result, if you like, that we're talking about. Um, but, you know, in my experience, I've tried it the other way. I tried years of hustling and pushing and negotiating and planning everything and being so rigid and lacking flexibility. And sure, I got some results, but the results were so much more surface level and so far less fulfilling um, and so much more less enjoyable as well. Um, so when you know, we take this approach, we, for me anyway, and I imagine I speak for you too, um, we know where we're going. We know the what and the why. The what and the why doesn't change. The how does. Exactly. The how is all over exactly. the place the how's whatever yeah the how's the fuck it but the what and the why is rigid that doesn't yeah. the doesn't pur the purpose the purpose is there driving all of it um you know for us the the why has always been transformation of the planet the how fuck it if i know like honestly <laughs> fuck it if i know i it's all a, a like you said, a, by the way, I thought that the feel, act, feel, think, act, feel, think, act, act, act was probably, you said a <laughs> lot of smart things. That was probably the smartest thing I've heard today. Um, it, was, wasn't, it was, wasn't mine. <laughs> no, it was just really, really brilliant. Because if I was to say what my intention is to train people, right? It's like, I, I the way I would say is like, go from the mind to your heart. And this, that's it. That's like when you said it, I was like, oh my God, that's exactly fucking it. Feel inspired action. Feel inspired action. Feel inspired action. Yeah. But the mind goes, feel, think. Think, 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 think. <laughs> or yeah. like what you said, feel, think, then they just go act and then they just stay there for like another year. <laughs> back, to, back to the feel thing. <laughs> <laughs> reducing the lag time. You know, the big thing that we work with the guys in is reducing that lag time between feel and act. It's brilliant. I mean, gap. really, really brilliant. I, I heard it, I was like, oh my God, yeah. Because it really is like at the end of the day, inside of you is an operating system. It's like some sort of program running, you know, you've had glimpses of when the program shuts down and you actually yeah. get to be you present moment, like happy. Oh my God, this is fucking life. Like that, that's great. <laughs> and then it's like, back to the program, back to the program, back to the program. <laughs> <laughs> the business, business equals progress. Business is success. I, uh, I walked into the gym the other, <clears throat> a few months ago, I, I, just a moment that always resonates with me. It might've been about 11 AM. And, um, the guy was like, Oh, you got a busy day. I'm like, no. And he's like, Looked to me in disgust. How dare you not be busy? How dare you not be running around and creating Lazy chaos? And <laughs> you inflow human. How dare you? Um, but yeah, just, just, just funny, isn't it? Just funny what we deem the markers of success. Um, because in reality, you know, in, you don't want to be busy, really, do you? Because I mean, you're doing some respects because there's, there's things that are flowing through you want to create. But at the same time, you're going to experience as well. Experience life. And like you said at the start, what you're passionate about, travel, food. Um, I mean, travel and food are two massive ones. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's, it's difficult to experience those. At last, yesterday, I mapped out my travel schedule for the next few months. Loved it. It was like <laughs> um, April was a week where we go down to Wales. Dogs holiday. We're taking the dogs on holiday. Um, <laughs> crazy yeah so we then come back from there then that's when i come out to new york then i'm in san diego for two weeks come back from there so that's in that's in may june we're traveling europe for a couple of weeks in june and spain in july craft on the end of july tuscany in august um some of the bits and pieces i was just like yes <laughs> <laughs> exactly. and do you know what I, i've not even tried to to for these to come up a few months ago, I was like, I really want to do more travel. 
And I've just left it. I've not even really thought about it. And then it's just so happened that, you know, these invites, these opportunities, I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Feels right. Okay, okay. Yeah. I like, hmm, maybe I put all these in my calendar. What, do they, what does it look like? Damn. Yeah. It's, uh, quite it's a nice so schedule. good. You know, one of the things that uh, even last time I was in Tuscany, like a practice that I've taken on is because the, the cellular system in the body is the magnet. It is the thing that attracts everything, right? And so a lot of the times people focus on because they live in a world of what I don't want. So they're constantly like, I don't want this. I don't, right? Like how many times have you asked someone what they want and they will tell you what they, I'm like, <laughs> I didn't ask you what you don't want. I asked you what you want. Well, I know what I don't want. <laughs> like <laughs> we're halfway there. Um, but one of the things that I've really been practicing is in the moments. So like even on this call, you know, like in my body, there's an energy and I'm like, I love having these kind of conversations. The funny part is, you know, to most people, they'd be like, well, you could be speaking to a client and, and getting, a, you know, a, a prospect or a business or blah, blah, blah. And like, it's not about that. It's just, there's a feeling in my body right now that says like, this is fucking awesome. Right? <laughs> And so whenever I, I do anything, whether it's like I get off a client call, I'm on vacation, I, I have an amazing experience with my kids, I created this practice of like celebrating it in the moment. So in the moment, I will literally stop and I will say to my system, I'm like, this is how I choose to feel always. And then I, I instruct the cells in my body to go and make that a reality. So like for you, travel is super important. So when you do that, your frequency out there is like, I want to do this. I desire to do this as often as possible. And look, like you said, I didn't go out and fill up my calendar. Opportunities <laughs> just show up to allow me to feel more of that. The problem is that people constantly are focusing on what they don't want. So the frequency they send in their body is like, I don't want this. And the cells don't understand that you don't want this. So they're like, oh, keep doing that. Like that works really well for them. They really like that. That's a good vibration. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's been amazing. Like just, the, you know, I, I, from that, I got downloads about how we get to create our business, like out of the ether. And it was like, you get to do this. Cause all I said was like, I get like, all I want my day to is to have these kind of conversations all day with amazing people. Like, what would that day look like? And then all of a sudden it's like, this person shows up and that person shows up and this thing happens. And I'm like, that's fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't do any of that. <laughs> it's, it's the whole thing of um, one of the coaches in our program says it so amazingly. He talks about relaxed confidence. Mm. You know, really been re just it's that relaxed and knowing. You know, we go back to feeling, don't we? It all comes from a feeling. Just that relaxed knowing that allows you to not have to push. And force, in my experience, the more I've tried, mm. the more I've pushed it away. Um, so true. It's just, <clears throat> yeah, it's just that, that, that ability to be detached as well from the need in the external thing to be the validation of self-worth. Because when you're able to dissolve that and really forgive yourself and meet yourself and realize who you are and what you want and feel connected and just speak your voice and realize it can be heard and receive. So your cup's always full and, mm, mm, mm. you know, it's just like, <laughs> you're just blissed out. It's kind of, I'm just starting a med, I've just met a new meditation teacher. Amazing guy. He's talking to me about this type of meditation. And um, <clears throat> I just was like, I'm just going to be so blissed out that I don't want to do anything in the world. And he's like, no, you'll come back. You'll come back. You'll want to create. You'll do stuff. You'll do and all that stuff. But it kind of is because you feel so good, so in flow. That feeling's just addictive. Yeah. Um, for me, anyway, if I don't really drink alcohol. Um, I don't really I, – I eat, I eat clean for the most part. But the reason why I don't drink alcohol is I don't like feeling drunk. I don't Same. like feeling I, I enjoy this so fucking much. I know. <laughs> the feeling taking a depressant and you know, I'm just like 
two beers and I'm I'm done. I'm yeah. anyone's. Two beers and I'm yours, Alan. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm yours on fresh air. Forget the beers. I don't um, even need the beers, brother. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But two um, beers and yeah. Dude, so fucking good. Um, so great, obviously, always spending time with you. And uh, yeah, before we let the most powerful man go. Uh, Which is you. <laughs> tell people uh, where they can uh, find out more about what you do for these amazing men. Um, website, thepowerfulman.com. You can jump over to there. Um, I'm, I'm always on Facebook too. So uh, if you want to connect with me personally, um, it's the the name at the end of the dot com is the Tim Matthews because apparently before it was Tim dot Matthews seven three five seven. There's that many Tim Matthews. Yeah. So um, it's the Tim Matthews. There you go. Um, the most powerful. The team. The, the Tim Matthews. <laughs> There's only one. Um, so yeah, man, it's been an absolute honor, pleasure. Oh, you know, thank so you good. guys for listening. Uh, whoever has listened, and um, yeah. Maybe I'll get invited until, back until the next time. Until the next time, yeah. All right, guys. Have an amazing rest of your week, and uh, we'll see you on the next show.